So I'm back today to show you two really good demos that I do simultaneously with my students regarding conduction and heat energy transfer. So the first one that I work on, and it's super easy to set up, is you get a hot plate with a ring stand bar. That ring stand bar is made of metal. We know that metals are good conductors. So watch what I do here. So I have a really hot, hot plate, and I use my thermal thermometer, my infrared thermometer here, to get my temperatures. So just kind of give you a little bit of an idea about the temperature here. Okay, that might be a little bit high, but you get the idea that that is a ridiculously warm temperature, especially if it's set on 10. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my ring stand bar, and again, let me get the temperature of that one. It's right about room temperature. Pretty warm in the room today, but 85.6. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bar, I'm gonna put about an inch or two onto the hot plate. You have really good solid to solid contact right here. We know that bars, metal especially, are gonna get nice and warm. So I'm gonna leave that there for a moment. I'm gonna come over to my second setup, which is basically the, the, the classic experiment of dark surface versus shiny surface, dark can versus silver can. Okay, I choose to keep them a little bit empty just because I get some really good results with this. Okay, I notice how my heat sources are really low because I want to get that really good direct uh, heat source directly to my can. So I'm going to take my dark can, put it there. Take my silver can, put it there. We have the exact same light bulbs. We have 150 watt heat lamps. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to take the temperature of the silver can. It's about 79.8 degrees. The temperature of the dark can, it's actually identical. So those two, because they're both made of aluminum, just one spray painted. I'm gonna turn my heat source on and I don't really have to keep it on for that long. So this is also a radiation experiment. So obviously the metals are great conductors, but what we have going on here is we have the energy from the light bulb is traveling through the space from the light bulb to the can and it's heating it up. So this is a radiation experiment as well. So you'll notice here as well, 150 watt bulb kind of directly on it. I put my heat source directly on it because I do want to get a pretty significant change in temperature and you really do. This actually works out really, really well. So I end up only keeping the heat source on there just for a short amount of time. And what I do is I just kind of get a quick feel here. Okay, that's, that's pretty warm. So watch this. I'm gonna turn the heat source off. I'm gonna turn the heat source off there. Take my infrared thermometer. Get the temperature, 177 degrees. In about 30 seconds, 177. On the silver can, 83. 177 and 83. Dark colors are good absorbers of energy, so you end up getting a significant absorbing power of the dark color. Because the silver can is shiny, light, and smooth, it's gonna reflect a lot of that heat. Now, even though it's metal, it's gonna warm up, but it's gonna get a significant amount of reflection. This is more absorption, this is more reflection. Light, shiny, and smooth reflect, dark, rough, and dull. This is not really a rough surface, but dark colors tend to be better absorbers. So I like that little activity. 30 seconds under a heat lamp, you have a significant difference in temperature. Let's go back over to the conduction activity. And let me take my bar off here. This gets a little bit tricky because the bar has such a small surface. Let me just kind of do the, oh yeah, starting to get a little bit warm. So this is the part that was on the hot plate. So let me see if I can line this up because it's a really small surface. Let me see if I get a good reading here. Oh, there we go, perfect. 217.4, that was directly on the hot plate. Let me get to about the middle. Let me see what we have here. I got 92.8 in the middle, and then over here that was far from the heat source, 79.7. So we went from temperature in the hundreds into the 90s, into the 70s. So what happens here is that because of atomic collisions, the heat will eventually work its way down the bar. And as it works its way down the bar, this entire bar is gonna get heated. 
This is how a blacksmith works in a forge. By putting the metal into the forge, the entire heat source is going to get absorbed into the metal. Metals are great conductors. And then the blacksmith can essentially forge the metal into something that's usable, like a knife or a horseshoe or something metal-based. So because of the atomic collisions, atom after atom after atom after atom will transfer that heat all the way to the end. Now, obviously I only left that on the heat source for just a few moments. If I left it there for hours, this entire bar would be well over 200 degrees. So hopefully you learned something here, maybe got an extra idea about what to do, how to show this demonstration to your students. It's a topic that can be a little bit dry sometimes to students, but if you can actually show them how this works, it, it is pretty powerful. So until next time, everybody, have a great day and look out for my next video. Don't forget to subscribe.